What's up, everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at Fortnite Marketing, and welcome to day five of Braze Mess 2023. Yesterday, we started talking about Braze data types and covered the four basic data types Booleans, numbers, strings, and time. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on Braze data types and cover what I call the advanced data types, arrays, objects, and arrays of objects. Even though I listed three data types, it's actually only two unique data types, arrays and objects. Let's jump in. Let's get started with arrays. So very simply put, an array is just a list. It's a list of items of the same data type. So we can have an array that represents a list of things about the user, but whatever that thing is, if the first item is a string, then all the rest of the items also have to be a string. So referring back to the braze data types we covered yesterday, we can have an array of Booleans, numbers, strings, or time. Back on our Nike website, if I navigate to the profile page, then there's an option for me to add interests right here. And I'm going to pick some of my favorite sports. So I'm going to click add interests, go to sports. And I've chosen basketball already. I'm going to choose pickleball and training and gym. Click save. And what I've just done is I've created a list of my favorite sports. Well, how convenient because we just talked about how an array is a list. So this information would be perfectly stored in an array that represents a list of my favorite sports. Let's create a string array custom attribute called favorite underscore sports and add these values in there. That's how that looks in Brace. Basketball, pickleball, and training and gym exactly what we selected on the Nike website under favorite underscore sports. Now, wait a minute. This just looks like a string data type where the value is this whole thing, basketball, comma, pickleball, comma, and training and gym. What's the difference? So from the user profile, yes, it's tough to distinguish whether this is just a basic string or a string array. But once again, if we navigate to data settings and custom attributes, we can see that favorite sports has a data type of array. Well, why does it matter? So if we choose a string data type, then we can only have one value. We have one large answer, which is quote, basketball, comma, pickle, comma, and training and gym, unquote. This makes it difficult to segment our audience. So if we wanted to segment an audience of users whose favorite sport equals pickleball, my user profile would not get selected because my favorite sport is basketball, comma, pickleball, comma, and training and gym. However, by using an array, we're allowed to add separate items or separate favorite sports to this overall list of favorite sports. And that allows us to use each array item more flexibly within Brace. We can now segment for audiences who has pickleball included in their list of array favorite sports. If arrays are lists, then objects are groups. Objects are groups of metadata that describe the parent level main data. Metadata are like children data that live under the parent data. Let's say on the Nike website, I'm allowed to favorite one and only one item. And I believe you can actually favorite multiple items, but for the sake of our conversation, let's just say it's only reserved for one item. So I found this colorful pair of shoes that I think would be per wonderful for my new puppy. I added this item to my favorite, but when Nike wants to log this data in my user profile, it's important to them that they include the name, the price, and the category. It doesn't make sense for them to create three separate custom attributes for favorite item name, favorite item price, and favorite item category. They should just make one object custom attribute called favorite item. And within this object data, there are three metadata, which are name, price, and category. So here's how that looks in Brace. I created my favorite item object and we see view nested object. Click on this and here are the metadata or the children data that's nested inside this parent data called favorite item. I also threw in size in there as well. So you can see all the metadata in this pop-up. This is very cool. I think Brace handles object data the best in the industry. So we talked about arrays, which are lists and objects, which are groups. So an array of object is basically just a list of groups. It's a list that contains data groupings or objects. And a perfect example is data to describe the current items in your shopping cart. 
back on the Nike website, I'm going to do some shopping. So let's add these Nike Air Max slides from yesterday into my cart. All right, so add to bag. And then maybe I'll check out some hoodies. So I'm going to go to hoodies. And all right, this Christmas one is very festive, perfect for Brazemas. I'm going to go ahead and add this one to my cart as well. Size medium, add to bag. I have these two items in my cart, but I'm not going to make a purchase quite yet. And Nike is definitely going to want to nudge me later on, when reminding me about the items in my cart in a cart abandoned campaign. And what better way to store the groups of data about each item than to use an array of objects? Here's what that looks like in Brace. So here we have abandoned cart items. Once again, click nested object. But there is a small difference in that there are multiple groupings this time versus our favorite item only had one object and there's just one group. So you notice the difference, there's two groups here. So arrays of objects are pretty much just multiple objects put together in a list so you can keep track of multiple groups of data. You can expand and collapse each object or each grouping as well. That's it for day five. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments below. We're happy to help. If you learned something new today, please subscribe for more awesome Braze videos in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.